अरे यार आई फिनिश्ड माय एम एस सी नाउ वाट वाट शुड आई डू आई हैव टू लुक सम थिंग आई हैव टू लुक फॉर सम एंगेजमेंट सम जॉब वाट शुड आई डू लेट मी गो टू इंटरनेट ओके गूगल वाट आर द जॉब्स आफ्टर एम एस सी बाई टेक्नोलॉजी लाइफ साइंस अच्छा हॉल रॉन्ग इंफॉर्मेशन नथिंग वैलिड Let me go to YouTube. Mm, what is the career path? Mm, oh, everybody is just trying to sell something to me. There's nobody in this world who can tell me if I can, you know, do something after my masters. Che, what information era we are living? We are living in misinformation era. Everywhere fake news, fake reviews, fake paths they are telling. Nobody is telling me practical path. Let me ask Shekhar sir. Hey guys, what's up? Shekhar Suman here from Biotechnica, and today we are talking about paths which you can follow after your masters. Now, many students come to me asking the same question again and again from various universities and colleges. They email me, WhatsApp me, call me, what not. So I thought, okay, why not make one single video, and I can pass on the links to all of you, whoever wants. guidance and wants to know which path to go after msc and what all things you'll require all that is included in this video so to know that to know what all you require to succeed after your masters in biotechnology and biosciences let's get started Welcome back. So in today's video, we are talking about the eight potential general paths which you can take after your masters. And this particular video will also talk about the tools, techniques, technologies, and interpersonal skills also which you require. So quickly, let's get started. The first thing which you can do is, of course, you can go for a PhD with a CSIR in it. Now UGC has come up with regulations and various other circulars which says that if you want to get a government job in a college or university in future, you must have a PhD. PhD with a CSI in it. Even though you have a PhD, no CSI in it, you may not get the job. So it's important to have a CSI in it with a PhD to be eligible for an assistant professor, professor HOD jobs in the. Now here is a tip I, I can give you. India has got the youngest population in the world, and government is going to invest heavily into the education sector, and they are going to come up with a lot of universities, and they are going to give convert a lot of colleges in, into university in the next ten years. And that means all these colleges will have vacancy for biotechnology professors, and you can you know bet on your chances. So this is a good so option to go for. But yeah, I know many people will say I don't want to go for this. So. what you can do is you can always apply for private sector jobs such as jobs in biocon syngene um, novo um, novartis uh, novozyme based companies are there where you can apply for jobs okay now while you are applying for jobs you can also upgrade your skills that's something which will come to it later but yeah what's the third option you can go for the jobs that means you can take a jo- take a job and side by side prepare for csi net exam now that's something which uh, many of the students do because they want to get into the job bandwagon and feel it like how it feels to do a job so yeah you can always do that you can either get into uh, sales marketing or research or contractual research jobs in various uh, csi labs and while you're doing your jrf contractual contractual GRF, you can prepare for your CSI net as well. So this is one option you have got. Coming to the fourth option, which you have got is of course sales and marketing. Now you see there are a lot of American companies, Japanese companies, Chinese companies who are trying to market their product in India to various healthcare companies, various R and D companies such as Crowdinger, such as various other companies that there like uh, Promega. So you know they have sales and marketing openings. So it's not a bad job; it's a very good job as long as you have the right skill set. So I'll come to that a little later. But now, what really happens is you can sell appliances, reagents, chemicals, and various other things to various. companies and institutes in india okay so this is a very good scoping job but what you will need here i'll come to that a little later so this is your fourth option after your masters now what's the fifth option after masters fifth is of course you can straight away get into teaching so you can get into schools colleges uh, as a guest lecturer in coaching institute as well as in online edtech companies also you can uh, become a teacher but i want to tell you here if you straight away after msc jump into this without doing your phd you will not grow and these um uh, 
probably in the online tech companies as well as coaching you may not grow if you don't have a phd so it's it's ideal to have it if you even if you don't have it if you have the right talent yes you will grow so these are the places you, you can get into uh, for teaching um, in government schools private schools government colleges private colleges as an ad hoc lecturer as a uh, guest lecturer you can join and while you are doing this job you can always prepare for your csn so this is one option you have got now coming to the sixth option which you have got is you can join somewhere like a lot of labs have contractual research positions like research assistant research fellow junior research fellow senior research fellow so all these places you can apply for but what really goes right or wrong is you know it's a slow process it has it is a contractual process but you you know it gives you a lot of exposure so you can join as a jrf you start experiencing how a lab works by, by the time you finish your uh, jrf and get into the srf mode probably you would have qualified your csa net and you know many times i've seen because of the familiarity with the project guide people convert their srf into a phd and you know finish up their phd so yeah this is also an option without even csa net also you can do this however I will not suggest you to do without CSI and because it will cost you a lot of money. Probably 20, 25 lakhs it will cost you if you are going to do your PhD on a self-funded basis. But yeah, this is one of the options. The seventh option which I can suggest you is, okay, if you're not getting a job in, in the R&D companies, you can go for internships. Now, these internships can lead to a job potentially. Uh, it can be a research internship. It can be a marketing and sales internship. It can be an editorial internship. It could be a teaching intern. So various internships are posted on the internet by various companies. But remember one thing, please do your background check before you, you know, join these companies because they may be fly-by-night companies and they may not be able to, you know, um, pay you the right kind of stipend or salary so yeah that you have to keep in mind apart from that biotechnica also conducts a lot of internships which are paid internship where which where you you have to pay to learn the skill set but we invite a lot of industry veterans industry experts to train you so that's one of the options you have got now the eighth option which you have got is of course you get into the bioinformatics era and you know um, domain you learn coding and uh, you become a bioinformatician or um, programmer uh, for bio bioinformatics softwares these kind of things you can do so these are just the generic options which i wanted to show you today but now what do you need after this so you need if you want to get into r d remember this you will need a lot of lab techniques so here here is uh, something which i wanted to highlight to all of you these are some important lab techniques which i have uh, you know jotted down and basically all these are modules of an internship which is coming up on 27th of december this year so you can you know if you enroll in the all-in-one r d techniques internship you will be getting exposure to all these techniques so these are basically important techniques which you will need in your uh, research and development uh, experiments and when you do your PhD or when you become a scientist all these are basic requirements and uh, for example protein purification techniques spectroscopy spectrometry PC PCR immunotechniques flow cytometry chromatographic techniques in fact we did a workshop also on flow cytometry recently and it was a huge success molecular cloning techniques next gen uh, sequencing NGS even on this we did a recently we did a workshop also microbiological techniques blotting techniques eliza western blotting tissue culture techniques fish jsh techniques and est sage and microarrays techniques now apart from this there are multiple other techniques which you may need in the lab but these are very basic and very important um, techniques so what we've done is we've brought all of them together into this all-in-one r&d techniques internship the link is given in the description where you can if you are aspiring to become a scientist these uh, skill set is a must and it's, it's, re it's a requirement for all of you now coming to the next part is suppose you want to get into sales and marketing even if you uh, you want to get into say coding so what are the techniques you will re uh, require so here is uh, so if you want to get into the coding part of a biologist so you need to learn python cadd matlab uh, of course bioinformatics so we keep coming with a lot of internships on bioinformatics cheminformatics uh, r language drug discovery so now all this as a coding for biologist initiative the link is given in the description biotechnica provides you you can always enroll in these courses and the very uh, cheap courses you know not more 
more than thousand rupees and you will be able to learn all these coding and you can place yourself as a bioinformatician in various bioinformatics companies okay so this is one way now one thing which i i think every biologist or every biotechnologist should know is the interpersonal skills now what are those communication skills networking social skills teamwork negotiation, relationship building, emotional intelligence, cultural competence, competency and adaptability. Now, why are these required? Required. Even though you will get the job, if you don't have the interpersonal skills, you will lose it faster. Now, what is, why does it happen is because if you're not able to communicate your experiment or if you're not able to, you know, work in a team, if you're not able to network with the right individuals, you cannot get a job. I remember uh, talking to a, a food technologist and how he got his first job is because he networked and he reached out to the you know head of FSSI right and uh, you know he offered him a job so this can kind of things can happen many people I give job because they network with me on LinkedIn so if I like your profile if I like your communication skills interpersonal skills basically we don't just look for technical skills we also look for interpersonal skills so even though you're a scientist social skills are a must you have to work in a team whether you are a scientist or a marketer or you, whether you are a teacher you have to always work in a team you have to learn the negotiation skills suppose you are in an interview and now you're not a to negotiate how much salary you should get so yeah in that case how would you get uh, the right salary you will always go home thinking that biotechnology pays you less but actually you didn't negotiate right so negotiation skills is a must now relationship building skills now you see most of the students who are uh, a subscriber of Biotechnica, they have a personal relationship with me. I directly talk to them, they directly talk to me, they schedule a Google Meet, I'll talk to them face to face, and of course through videos and uh, various other social media, I'm, co I'm connected to them. So what happens? We have a relationship with you, you have a relationship with me, so that's how we learn, right? So you have to build that relationship with every scientist who is working in Biocon, Syngene, or any other um, uh, you know big company, MNCs, then you will get better at networking so that's very important now adaptability now for example right now um, the economic environment is good, good or bad accordingly you adapt and you look for offbeat jobs or maybe mainstream jobs whatever is your core expertise according to that you adapt and learn and you know uh, get a job so yeah interpersonal skills i believe is the most important among all the skills whether it is the technical skills which i just showed you or whether it is the you know coding for biology skills but interpersonal skills is a must no matter what you want to become in life okay now moving ahead what will be your final desti destination whatever you want to go become so uh, either you land into academic jobs so you, you can become assistant professor which can lead to a hod or you can get into research jobs so starts with a scientist but of course you need a phd for this but then it can lead up to a chief scientific officer in a company if you get into sales and marketing it starts with business development officer it can lead to chief marketing officer again a very highly paid job if you you know get into administrative jobs you can become an admin assistant you can start as an admin assistant and it can lead to a ceo level position also now there are some people who will say okay let me leave the field and go for the regular fields which we have i will prepare for ssc upsc or maybe i will um, you know do mba and get into um, mbhr marketing whatever remember when you leave this field and go to the broad field the competition is higher and there are much more talented people than you okay if you ask me i would love to run in a race where only i am competing to myself if i'm competing to hundred thousand more people my chances of success is lesser right so the moment you leave the field remember this is going to be a hindrance however i don't think it's a bad thing to do if you are not satisfied with the field and the opportunities you're getting but think about it you are competing with crores of more other people who may be more talented with than you so what you can do you can either do your mba mba or upsc or ssc whatever competition will be more that's acceptable fact but yeah that's something if you like okay you can get to so here is what i wanted to talk to all of you about the paths which you can follow after your masters i know the start of the video was a little comic but the only idea was to tell you that there's a lot of misinformation a lot of confusion around this and i invite all of you to write to me if you have any personal question maybe you can comment below if i find time i'll definitely reply to you or you can directly connect with me if you're a part of our telegram group or uh, the whatsapp group of biotech you can directly message me and we can 
be talking just like this live okay i believe that every student is talented it's just that they need a little bit of hand holding a little bit of pat on the back and say that you are talented all you need is the right direction and i'm ready to give you that okay so thank you so much for watching this video i'll see you in the next one till then please take care of course winter is here but make sure the path is clear there is no mess around and you achieve your targets wishing you all the best for all the endeavors which you make in your career take care bye bye